a lot of chairs. Miss Stephanie? Sir. We all set? Right. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. I don't know that I knew this, but this is recorded, so I have to speak with a microphone to get recorded, I guess. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is the town hall for presentations uh, to explain the proposed amendments uh, that uh, have been approved by the board during the year. Uh, my name is Tom Bava. I'm the uh, vice president and I'm also the chairman of this ad hoc committee that put these uh, amendments together. And uh, this is the second of uh, two um, town halls that we've had. We had one last Friday. Had one last Friday afternoon. I want to appreciate you being here. Uh, we'll do our best to uh, explain what's what the proposals are and how they how they should uh, how they are planned to uh, be voted on and when they will be um, invoked. Let's say if they're approved. Uh, the team, uh, the ad hoc team, I'm going to introduce you now. Is um, to my right is Maureen Pratcher. And to her right is Bob DeBester. And way down the end down there is, uh, yeah, no, you, it's you. Uh, it's Gary Grant. And we've been working here in a, for the last couple of months, okay, to try to put together uh, the actual scope of the amendments and uh, this presentation. So with that, going to turn it over to my friend, okay, Maureen Patcher. I will be presenting the first four amendments. The um, first one is section 7.11 special assessments. And I won't read the uh, <clears throat> reason. Do you wanna to go to the next slide? Reason for recommendation, it's um, basically uh, that this came through the finance committee and we have a member of the finance committee who was an insurance in insurance his entire career and he did an assessment of heritage bay insurance policies and coverage and came back to the finance committee and recommended this amendment so next slide um, you'll see this is exactly how it will appear on your ballot with the changes to our existing bylaws in blue and underlined. So those are the only changes that are being proposed to this section. And this applies to our coverage regarding uh, storms, specifically named storms. And Joe Maraca, the finance committee member, basically came back and said, with weather patterns being as erratic as they are with climate change and all these things, he said it's not out of the realm of possibility that there might be more than one named storm in a season. And right now our, our bylaws allow the board to assess up to $200 a year without going to a membership vote. And he said, if we have more than one named storm, that's you know not gonna give the board a lot of latitude in dealing with the damages from a named storm. So his suggestion was to amend this, to exclude named storms from this provision and add this the, the language, which I will read the bottom sentence, special assessments for the repair of damages caused by a name storm shall not exceed $200 per parcel per name storm unless approved in advance by a majority of the members who are eligible to vote and present in person or by proxy at a duly called meeting of the members. So basically, um, you wanna go on to the next slide, Tom? So this is a little bit of background. Basically, I already covered the first point. This came from the finance committee. Right now, our deductible for any named storm is 1.408 million, which is quite a high deductible. The club has only uh, issued one special assessment in its history, and that was in 2017 for Irma. The next slide. This is an important point that this would this is not something that automatically kicks in. Number one, it has to be a named storm. It can't just be like a tropical depression that you know comes through. It has to be a named storm 
and the board has to, or the community has to incur actual damages. So the board can only assess if we have had actual damages. So if it, say, for instance, what happened uh, this year, downtown Naples was hit very, very hard, but our community was spared for the most part. We did not incur significant damages. So the community would have to incur significant damages and the board would have to decide that we do not have you know, the available funds immediately to take care of the damage that uh, we need to assess for a specific storm. And the other point I would make is that it doesn't necessarily have to be the full 200 that this amendment allows. It's up to $200. So if the damages that we incur, you know, are not as significant that we would need $200 per door, then the board, you know, has the latitude to assess whatever, you know, below to anything up to 200, but it wouldn't necessarily be 200. Um, and anything else about this? I think that's that's the main the main background about it. it did I forget anything I mentioned last time? All right, then we'll open it up to questions. Maybe I went through it a little bit fast, but if you have any questions, yes, go ahead. About a quarter. About a quarter of a million dollars. About a quarter of a million. About a quarter of a million. Right. Yeah. Right. right. No. What it would do is give the board a little bit of flexibility in um, moving a little bit quicker because if we have to go to a membership vote, which may be a catastrophic storm, we still would have to do that. But it would it would give the board a little bit of a leg up because member votes take time and they take money. They, uh, I've heard bandied about eight to 10,000 for a me membership vote for all the notices and mailings and things like that. And they also take time because there's state statutes requiring the amount of time that you have to allow members for a member. So it takes time and money for a membership vote. So this allows the board to have a little bit of flexibility in, you know, say the storm happens you know, two weeks before a board meeting, theoretically, the board could put that on the agenda to uh, to for the special assessment right away, and it would it would give the um, the community a little bit maybe of a um, advantage for other communities who might be competing for the same tradespeople, because <laughs> you know how hard it is to get tradespeople, and if you have a name storm, they're all going to be in demand. So if we can move faster, it might give us a little bit of an advantage over other communities that would be in the same boat. Yeah, one thing about all of this is this is no way increases your fees and no way increases, okay, your liability. What it does in effect, it says in the event of a year where we have multiple damage storms, we don't have to go back and as Maureen just said, we don't have to go back and pay the money to have a special meeting, right? We'd have to have a special meeting the way the, the, um, uh, the, the documents are written now in order to assess you for the second storm. Now, reality is we're going to pay for all storms. You know, it's one way or another. The only question is, do you want to spend an extra $10,000 and wait for having a special meeting to do exactly what you're going to do anyways? So that's the advantage of this. This helps the board, okay, manage your club better. Any other questions? No? Okay. Uh, Maureen, let me get me machine here. And I, when I started, I said four amendments, and that's because the next section, there actually are three different amendments that you will be voting on, but they all fall within section 8.4, maintenance and alteration. So we group them together and I'll go through this, um, but you will be voting on each one separately, even though they all apply to the same section. So they- uh, This is basically what you just said, I'm sorry. Right, I'm, that's I'm, basically it. I'm a so moving, slide behind sorry, me. Sorry, I should be telling you next slide. No, it's okay. okay. The, the first one I would call basically cleaning up the documents. When we, um, we proposed these amendments, it became apparent that 
in Section 8.4, there were two terms that are not defined in our bylaws. Uh, that would be club community common areas and golf course or golf common areas. They're in the quotes on that slide. And it's not a good thing to have undefined terms in your bylaws that it makes things vague and, and possibly open to misinterpretation. So the, this proposal um, would take out those undefined terms and everything is now club common, er, proposed to be club common areas, which is defined in our bylaws. So I say this is basically cleaning up the language of the bylaws. So that's uh, Amendment A. Amendment B um, is basically to increase the capital expenditure budget right now, and it has been ever since we took over from Lennar, up to $300,000 that can be spent in a, in a capital expenditure budget per year without going to a membership vote. That is, uh, the proposal here is to increase that to 400,000. And the rationale being, if you can, I know that chart is very small, but if you have your handout and can look at your handout, it demonstrates that if inflation had been factored in for the past 10 years, the purchasing power of uh, what would have cost 300,000 back in 2012, now in 2022 would have cost over 380,000. And inflation, that doesn't take into inflation for this coming year. Um, because if this amendment is passed, it wouldn't go into effect until the 2024 budget. So by then, it probably would um, be almost spot on to $100,000, the difference in purchasing power from two, 2012 until our 2024 budget. So basically, it's, it's asking the community to uh, allow the board to invest in, the, in our community at the same rate that was allowed back in 2012. And on to um, Amendment 2C. This is basically to allow the board on an ongoing basis to adjust the capital expenditure budget based on the consumer price index. If there has been an increase in the consumer price index, the annual index, to allow the board to increase the capital expenditure budget by that percentage. It doesn't have to be... It, it wouldn't be automatic. It would have to be a uh, resolution by the board. They'd have to take the positive step to do that. The reason for this is so we won't have to come back or the board wouldn't have to come back, say, every five to 10 years like we're doing now and say, hey, let's readjust for inflation. We've lost all this purchasing power, as I just said in the previous slide. So it would keep the capital expenditure budget on par with the current inflation rate. So you want to go on to the next slide? Okay, this looks a little complicated, and this is also what's going to appear exactly on your ballot, but it's color-coded, and hopefully it's easy enough to follow if you read in the top. The um, proposed Amendment 2A is highlighted in yellow, and basically it, you'll see that's eliminating the word community, <clears throat> and also the whole uh, sentence or, uh, that apply that supposedly applied to golf common areas, which is not a defined term. So that's eliminating those ambiguous terms. The second one is a proposed amendment 2B, and that's highlighted in green and is basically just the one change, changing 300,000 to 400,000. And then the third one is highlighted in blue and is basically saying what I just said, tying the capital expenditure budget to any increase in the consumer price index, but you'll notice the first three words say by board resolution. So it would have to be a, a positive vote by the board. Next slide. Uh, just a little bit, uh, we're not to questions yet, but we'll get there soon. Um, a little background for those who aren't very familiar with the club finances, the capital expenditure budget is for things that do not currently exist at Heritage Bay. So for instance, things like roofs and carpeting and I don't know, uh, light fixtures, kitchen equipment that exist, that is all covered by our reserve fund. But things that do not currently exist, 
will be covered by the capital expenditure budget. And some examples are that, uh, that the camera that's recording us right now, that was part of our capital expenditure budget because that did not currently exist until we bought it. Things like the new retaining wall along the cart path, that was part of the capital expenditure budget. The tennis awning. So things that don't currently exist go under the capital expenditure budget. The next point, oops, next point is um, that the board does not always levy members for the capital expenditure budget. So for the past two years, the board has not, your annual assessment has not included a portion that would go towards the capital expenditure budget. We have something called the, um, well, I'll get into that in one second. Let's go to the next slide. We have something called the resale. Uh, I guess I no go back one. Sorry, <laughs> I don't mean to be. We have something called the resale capital contribution fee, which if you buy a home in Heritage Bay, this is a fee that's levied right now. It's set at five thousand dollars. That that money goes into the capital expenditure fund. So that has been built up, you know, we had a crazy real estate market and that fund has built up in the past couple of years. The board for the past couple of years has said, we've got enough in that fund that we don't need to uh, levy you know, the capital assessment to members. We will use the money that is has been accumulating in that fund and that has taken care of the capital expenditure budget for the past two years. This year, our budget is only about 140 for the capital expenditures. And that was, we had more than enough money in the, in the budget, in the fund to take care of that. Okay, now let's go on to the next slide. Um, and the, the capital expenditure budget, except during the uh, years of the Heritage Bay Expansion Project, when the entire fund went towards the HBEP, typically it is, a list of say maybe a dozen items or so, 10 to 12 items that, you know, smaller amounts that add up to the total things that I've mentioned before, like the awnings, the camera, we got a new speaker system down for when we have golf outings, things like that. It's a usually a list of 10 to 12 different items. And the next point is that uh, I, I pretty much hammered that point home that this basically would restore the purchasing power that the board has had. It's been eroded over the years. As inflation has gone up, the purchasing power has gone down. Okay, next slide. This is a very long-winded way of saying that when we assess the capital resale contribution fee for members or for people who buy into Heritage Bay, the $5,000, in my opinion, it's kind of an implicit promise that that money will go towards capital expenditures, that we will use the money to reinvest in this community, to keep up the high standards and high quality that people buy in. They expect that their money, that they're paying this $5,000 and it will be used in the way that the name implies, that it will go for reinvestment in this community. So um, I, I think that as, that amount has increased over the years, the capital resale contribution fee. So should the capital expenditure budget, you know, commensurate as that has gone up. Uh, next slide. And as I mentioned with the uh, storm assessment, the board of directors is not obligated to budget the entire amount. Even if the amount goes up to 400,000, that is the cap. The board does not have to, budget up to the cap. So for instance, as I mentioned this year, the cap is 300,000, but the board allocated 140,000 towards capital expenditures, expenditures this year. And the final point is, no, not the second final point, is that uh, I mentioned before that this tying it with the, tying the increase to the CPI, it just keeps the, the increase uh, along with the, what the national what inflation rate is. Final point, I have heard several people ask me about this, so I, we've included this, that 
Um, some people are saying, is this an end run around to get pickleball approved without going back for a membership vote? And that was not part of the discussion at all when the finance committee and the board of directors discussed this, this was pickleball was not the issue on the table. So the board did not, the finance committee and the board did not address any specific projects when this, uh, um, these amendments were proposed. Next slide. And now we can open it up for questions. Go ahead. Now. You want to use the microphone? So, cause it's being taped. Uh, Harry Welka, Coach Holmes One. Um, the one proposal that you had right at the beginning where you wanted, in effect, to automatically increase how much money, I think it was the second one you were talking about. The, the budget, the annual capital expenditure yeah. budget? And, and, and that you could, as a board, automatically increase this as if you wanted to. I'm against this. Anything like that should come to the board or to the members to vote on because you're asking more money from us. The one proposal that, um, trying to figure out where it was, it was towards the end If, if I think of it all. Tied to the consumer price index? Or? Yes, yes. Um, there again, you as a board can just go and say, well, instead of, you know, three or $400,000 in there, we need more. And again, I think that should come to the members. I mean, when you're talking money, and even though you may feel 100000 you know, and that's not coming from each member, but I feel that the people that live here should have a vote on that. And then um, there was the last one that you were talking about, about the capital improvement. Well, the, there's basically two financial components to this section. Number one, to increase the uh, capital budget up to 400,000. And number two, to tie it to the CPI that the board could by resolution. So those are the two financial okay. components. Again, tying it to the board, you're saying to us, if there's an 8% increase, we're gonna get an 8% increase. No. Okay, okay. We, we but could, you could. So again, I'm against that because you're asking more money from us. I've been here over 11 years, and my master dues have gone from 4,000 to 8,200 and some dollars. Let me repeat one thing though, that the board has not assessed you for the past two years for capital expenditures. We have used the money that was collected through the capital resale contribution fees. Okay, so now why do you want to get rid of that? Okay, you got a lot of money in it. We're not getting rid of anything. We're asking for the ability to spend that fund. Okay, but didn't you say that new residents were not going to have to contribute? No, I did not say that at all. That's my mistake. Okay. The other piece, Harry, too, um, that... that um, you need to take into consideration is that it's it's the, the way you would want to do it is every year at an annual meeting, we would have to put that on the docket and the members would vote. We could do that. But then you have to file with the county and there's fees involved and there's time delays. And so the 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 purpose of this change is to just allow it to happen easily with less cost. Because there's a cost to file with the county and have the attorneys make the changes. And, and, and this just eliminates having to do that every single year. But okay. you, one, you, one you thing. do have a vote. I mean, you, yeah. you are now voting on this. So the membership is, is going to make a decision about whether these amendments are allowed. Right. So everybody has the opportunity now to, to cast their ballot and make that decision. Yes, go ahead.
That's a good point. However, I would say that um, when on years when we have um, the list of 10 to 12 items, not very many of them are construction projects. Once in a while, like the, the building, the retaining wall, that was a construction project, but most of them are purchases. For instance, Kevin for many years was sharing or borrowing, I should say, a big piece of golf course maintenance equipment from another club and it became, uh, it, we couldn't borrow it anymore. We had to buy. So we are, these are most often pieces of equipment or things, you know, even consumer things like cameras and, and AV systems or uh, accounting software or something like that. So those are items that might be purchased anywhere in, the, you know, from a com company anywhere in the country. So that's why we would go more, I think, with the CPI than a construction index. I mean, yes, sometimes they are construction projects, but that's not really the norm. Well. If, it's, if it was a program we don't already have or. Right, we do put it under this. Like we, for, I think it was last year, bought a de, uh, new depreciation software for the accounting department to, because we did not have that before. Yeah. So. And just to add to what Maureen's saying, you, you can, Look at this in this way for capital. If in fact, okay, we were borrowing something, or we had a leasing agreement on some large piece of equipment, and all of a sudden, they tell us we're not going to lease these out anymore. Now that forces us now to go out and make that purchase, and that's you can get into the hundreds of thousands of dollars for some of Kevin's equipment that he may be borrowing or leasing. All of a sudden, now we've got to do that through capital. If we don't have enough capital, something either, and if that's an important piece, we got to have it to maintain the golf course. That means some other capital then would have to come out. Some other things that people would like to see around here because of a change in financial arrangements of some sort. So that's those are the reasons why increasing this limit, we're not increasing the amount, okay? The amount is, is approved. And in this case, this past year we had for 2023, our docs provided for $300,000. We actually allocated 140 of that. Okay, that's all we use this year because with the HBP and all the other things that we accomplished here in the last couple of years and, and some other projects that we're not ready to fund right now, that kept that number down. So when you look at the board, the board does not always spend the maximum amount that's allowed, but having it there, okay, gives you the opportunity. You have to kind of separate two here, okay? Most of the things you see here today are in the reserve fund. And the reserve fund is analyzed every couple of years. And we've had to increase. In fact, that's where I think our extras, help me out, Mrs. Treasurer, that the extra that we had in capital funds last year went to the reserve fund because of everything you have, the value of replacing it all went up. So we had to do it there. So separate the idea here of what you have and replacing what you have with new purchases, okay, that we don't have today and the pricing that's going to likely happen with that. No. Right. That's, that's part of the reserve fund. That's the reserve fund. Yeah. Right. Point taken. Are you saying that you think the construction index is higher? Well, the thing is, is 
four hundred. Even if this does get approved and go up to four hundred thousand, if we have to do any major construction, say there's people who want to expand the wellness center, something like that is likely to cost more than four hundred thousand. In which case, it would have to go to a membership vote anyway. So we would budget what it would, what we think would be the actual cost. It wouldn't have to. We wouldn't have to shortchange ourselves. Anything, any big project. It's going to go to the membership for a vote. Yes, go ahead. If the board chooses. We, we start the budget process in July. Well, actually management does. And it, uh, then we have budget workshops with the finance committee and the board. So I think it would probably be included in that time cycle. And the final budget is approved normally in November. So I would say it probably would be sometime in the fall that decision would be made. Yes. Well, last, at, during the budget cycle, uh, I think I mentioned, we had uh, quite a bit, I can't recite the numbers and I didn't bring my laptop, I'm very sorry, but we had a substantial amount in the capital fund because we've had all these resales. So we budgeted 140,000 and I believe it was more than 160,000 that we've, I, I, for some reason, the number 267 stand, stands in my mind, but don't quote me on that was uh, the board made the decision to transfer that to the reserve fund. Don't quote me on that number though. I'll have to go back and look. Well, we still couldn't spend more than 300,000. Even if we let that fund grow to a million dollars, the board can't allocate more than $300,000 a year unless this amendment passes. But so, what, we, what we did do though, is that accumulated um, um, capital fund uh, put, when we put it into reserves, that's actually reducing the amount of dues you would have to pay. And so that's why the board made the decision to do that. But if you think back to the HBEP, I think we put $2 million of, of the capital fund into funding the HBEP, reducing the cost per door. I don't, I don't know about that $2 million. It, was, it was something like that. But we did for like three three yeah, years in a row. I don't believe it was $2 million. I think it was uh, about a quarter of a million, I think. No. We allocated the budget for three, yeah, the but, capital yeah. budget you're, for you're like at least head, three man. years in a row. You're shaking your head. So did we answer your question or do you have? Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, yes. it's in the budget. It's in the, the budget. budget and you can see it on the website. Yeah. If you look on the website for our budget and we haven't spent that yet. Okay. But it's allocated and improved even though we had the $300,000 limit this year. And, and, and at, at one point it was much higher than 140,000. We threw some things out. We said, no, we're gonna delay that. We can do that next year and that kind of thing. And it ended up at 140. And what is it? It's, you know, February. We haven't really spent a lot of that very much at all. I don't think at this point, um, you know, the, the main, there's a couple items in there, okay, that, uh, that we're working on to spend it. But that's the cap for that. 
Harry? If it's all part of the capital expenditure budget and the, the total budget is right now less than 300,000, that is a board vote. However, you bring up the tennis courts and pickleball courts, that was a change in use of amenity. And that's a whole different ball of wax. And that's why that went to a membership vote. That was not simply the money, but it was asking members, do you want to change the use of this amenity from one thing to another? So that's why that went for a membership vote. But if it's simply a laundry list of things that add up to 300,000 now, that is a board vote. And what we're saying is if the laundry list, and if this amendment passes, that laundry list can be up to 400,000. But again, I will repeat that a lot of that money is, at least for the past two years, all of that money has come from the resale capital contribution fees and not from current member packets. The other thing, um, Harry, is that the, the membership doesn't just vote on individual capital projects never have and probably unless never will, limit. unless they're over the limit. So when you mention the clock, that's in next year's capital budget or this year's capital budget. There's no member vote for that. That's, oh, it was um, either people really wanted the clock or people really hated the clock. And it was and, an upside and, down bell curve. Yeah, it a really lot of was. people on one end, a lot of people on the other end. I think 63%, 63 of the people voted for it. Yeah. Voted for it. Yes, go ahead. Did the people vote for the clock? Did they know what it was going to cost or just the fact that they wanted the clock? You mean on the survey? Are you, are you talking about the survey? Okay, no, there, was, there were no... There, there were no costs, no. There were no costs in the survey. It, it was simply asking people to prioritize the pos things that the uh, Long Range Planning Committee thought might be possibly included in future capital expenditures. Okay, but again, I will repeat that, you know, you don't want that clock. Well, that money is not coming out of your pocket right now. That is in the current. No, listen. Okay, the, the money in the current capital expenditure fund, 140000 all of that. We had more than that from capital resale contribution fees. So that's going, the budget this year was totally paid for by those resale contribution fees. But the year isn't necessarily next year. Next year is a whole new deal. That's correct. That is correct. Well, you know, um, if he here's if, the idea. Yeah, and if he needs capital items, he does come forward and ask, and, you know, the board definitely... So uh, today's um, town hall is really not the place to discuss that. You're going to have the opportunity to vote, guys. And, and we're just trying to explain to you what the changes are being that are being proposed. Uh, they were uh, in an ad hoc committee that went to the board. The board approved the changes. And now we're trying to explain to you what those changes are so that you're educated in your vote. 
I'm, I'm hearing a couple of people saying they don't agree with this, vote against it. But recognize that, that part of um, the reason that we want to do this is that we have a desire to maintain our community, to keep it up to the standards that keep us being a leading bundled community in Southwest Florida. And, and it makes it easier for us to do that and, and to keep things up to standards the way people want them. So there, is a, there, there are a number of members who just want to stop the spending and reduce the annual dues. We could do that. The, 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 the aesthetics of this club would decline, the value of our homes would decline, and there are other communities that stopped investing in their, in their property that very clearly demonstrate what happens to housing values. So again, this is not a place to really discuss your opinion on what's good or what's bad about these amendments. We're just explaining them to you so you can vote on them. If you don't agree with them, vote no. But recognize that the, that the real reason for doing this is so that we can maintain the aesthetics of the club and keep up with the Joneses next door. And I, I want to just repeat one more time. If you were a, someone who just came in and, and bought, a, bought in Heritage Bay and paid your $5,000 resale contribution fee, wouldn't you want the board to have the ability to spend that on what it's supposed to go to? It's supposed to go towards capital investment in this club. That's those people, it's kind of like a promise to them when we're asking them for that money, that money will be used for capital investment in this club. So your money is not just going to go, you know, willy nilly. It's it, we're kind of making a contract with them that it will be used to keep up the high standards of this club. People buy in because they love the beauty, the, the how well it's, uh, you know, the, the amenities, they kind of come in with an expectation, okay, I'm paying my money and you will be using this money for capital investment. Okay. We're done with that. Thank you. <laughs> Next item we have, this is proposed amendment three. It involves the declaration and the bylaws since it, uh, it's, it's uh, addressing uh, voting. This is the recommendation uh, that came from the board and it is listed on the uh, actual amendment itself uh, verbatim. Uh, correctly uh, states that uh, all nine elected directors present equally all 1,250 members of the club. Uh, this proposed amendment provides an opportunity for all of the members to vote for each of the nine director seats. However, they will be maintaining the equal representation of two elected homeowners or two elected directors from each of the four housing types that we have already described in our documents, and that is the coach homes, single family homes, terrace and verandas, plus the existing at large that we have today. This is the way the amendment would look. Uh, some of these are um, edits where we have eliminated the term voting group and replaced it with housing group. Voting group is an older term. A housing group now is more appropriate to uh, what we have because we have separated our four divisions, if you want to call that, by housing type. This is a uh, review here of the um, total number of units within those housing types. You have uh, 450 terraces. You have um, you know, half, only half the slide is on here, but let me get to the bottom. You have 364 verandas. You have 184 coach homes, and you have 252 single family homes. Each of those today have two directors plus the at large. In this case, uh, again, most of these items here are. Uh, changes from voting group, okay, to all nine directors, and that the candidates uh, are now classified by housing group as opposed to voting group. Uh, and, and this is the materials. Uh, the materials would change because uh, you would not, 
Let's put it this way. Everyone within Heritage Bay under this proposal would be voting for all of the candidates, not just your own housing group. Uh, and this is this particular one, and many of this, okay, is uh, the change from housing groups uh, from uh, two housing groups from voting group, excuse me. And the counting, uh, the counting is done uh, all by uh, the office here, uh, as we've done in the last few years. Vacancies on the board. Um, again, um, the uh, change here is that uh, housing group in case in in, in 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 substitution for class of members or voting group who elected the director. Just saying that group. Again, down the bottom, removal, same thing, voting group. The summary of the changes, that, and I think I mentioned it, is that currently we permit you to vote for one at-large director and two directors that represent your housing group. The members cannot vote for directors that represent other housing groups today. The proposed method would permit members to vote for all housing group directors in addition to the at-large candidate. Except the exception here is the at-large seat candidates, okay, can come from any housing group. The history on this is that uh, a ad hoc group uh, put together by the board last spring uh, investigated different things that different communities were doing and some of the uh, issues, okay, that we have been hearing from some of the members about having a larger access and um, the vote. There were several opportunities there for changes. However, the, the board uh, did unanimously pass that motion to seek a member vote to, uh, to seek this amendment to do what we just described. So this came from, as opposed to in Maureen's case, from the finance committees. This one came from uh, directly from the ad hoc committee that was put together last spring. Timetable on this one is that if the voting members approve this amendment to be voted on next month at the annual meeting on the 24th of March, if you vote for this, this system would be used to elect the open seats next year for the 2024 annual meeting. Do any have questions? Make sense? Yes, sir. Is there a possibility that all the members are going to be in the No. No. Anyone handle it? No, we maintain that that breakout of two members from each housing type and one at large. The only difference now is previously you're in coach home one, so you could only vote at large or for the coach home candidates. Now you're going to be able to vote for the candidate that's running for single family homes, the candidate that's running for veranda, the candidate that's running for coach homes, the candidate that's running for single family homes, and the candidate that's running at large. So you will get to vote. Uh, and and the reason uh, we believe that's a good change is that uh, once you're on the board um, of the master association, you're representing the entire community, and 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 so we want the members to be able to decide who's representing them in total. If there's somebody, for example, um, the election we've got coming up next month. If there's somebody running that you really don't like and they're not in your housing group, you can't vote for or against them. Under the new rules, you would be able to do that. But, but very specifically to answer your question, the housing types are gonna each have representatives, two in each housing type and one at large. That doesn't change. Yes. Yes, I think it was in the slide. Yeah, two thirds approval, 66 and two thirds, right? Okay. Any of these amendments that you just saw, 
uh, these five, technically five, okay, amendments, okay, they all need two thirds vote of all of the members who vote. That's how our docs are set up. Yes, hi. Typically, the way we've got this separated is because we have two-year terms, we pretty much have a flip-flop. We have, in fact, this year coming up, there are five. Five open slots this year because that large. The year that this would take effect would be, next year would be four. You'd basically be just voting for the candidates that come out of the each of the four Voting districts, one each. Yeah, your your vote next month is going to be under the old rules, uh, because if you vote then to change them, then they have to be recorded by the you know into the county until they take effect, and so it won't mm -hmm. be until the following year that this change happens. Any other questions? My only comment is basically what the board has allowed here is to provide an and and and. Um, expanded right to the owners, okay, to vote for all of the candidates, okay, as compared to what you have today. So this is an expansion of your rights. Any other questions? Anything the board want to add, the uh, committee? All set? I appreciate that you could come today. I'm glad, I hope you got your questions answered. I hope you have an understanding and talk to your friends and explain it, okay? There's no right or wrong here. It's just proposed changes. And thank you very much. Because of this. Yeah, they need to be closed. Yeah. What were changes you had I'm sure there are a lot of times in the that this is why the sun comes up. Yeah. And I think if, if you did something like that, it had curtain problems.